My name is Isabel Figueroa. Um, I'm from Washington, D.C., and I just graduated from Vanderbilt University. Um, I majored in English and what's called international development. I came to South Africa because I really love to travel and I like working with kids. Um, part of my international development major was really focused on education and how that could just make such a huge difference in um, developing communities. If I could give a few words of advice to people who are coming here, um, I would say just from day one, like, jump right in there. A lot of people, I mean, I'm used to traveling, but I was shy here too in the very beginning, and I, our first day in Massapumalele, like, when all the students came and all the volunteers were there, you know, everyone's kind of shy, but I realized, I just went up to these two girls and they said it was Siki and Zizi, and it's, it's like, they're, child, they're children, they're younger, they're not going to come up to you into a big group and be like, hi, da -da. so you just have to go in there and... It's not a test or an interview, it's just... And then they will open up to you and it, you can bond with them like so much faster. There's no time that you really like want to waste. So you um, uh, well, it's, it's funny because a lot of times I think that, you know, my like, classroom time has been so valuable, but I think also the, like, relationships that I've made individually with some of the kids is really what's gonna last for them. And we have actually having this discussion the other day about, like, playing favorites and you know when you when you're in the classroom it's actually absolutely a hundred percent you have to be fair with, with all the kids but after school you can't help who is coming to you and wants like an, another story or who's coming to you during interval you know you can't just go seek out kids like it's who's coming to you and so that sort of naturally just it's all them really and you kind of have to just like let that develop and and, and and then people start asking you to do things with them or like inviting you back to their homes and I think it's just like those conversations that really make a difference. Like just coming from the states, a lot of I realize that even in like casual settings, it really is just so formal. It like talking with people, like adults and children, everything's really sort of by rules, and that can to some extent can create like a wall between two human beings. And I don't know. Here it's just here it really it hasn't been that way and I want to take that sort of openness and just I don't know the importance of being earnest back with me to the states you know and it might like surprise people sometimes or like be shocking but I think that everyone could use like a dose of reality and just like um well for example when we went when we were in Ocean View our first day um I met this little girl in Iran and she when we went to the, up to the Rasta community <clears throat> And then I was just talking to her, playing with her, and then I was kind of like walking away and she said, oh, like my mom wants to meet you. And I was, I was like, okay, I really don't know what I would say to her, you know, and so she like led me over and I realized like, you know, the mom was shy and I was like, she, it's like an older woman and I'm used to, when I'm communicating with like an older woman who has five children, I'm really like, I don't know, more... Not shy. What's like the just on the, mm -hmm. um, not hesitant. Just like more demure, or like letting them speak. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't. I and mean, you have to like understand that the people in these communities, they don't feel that same hierarchy. Like she was really asking of me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there's so many things that she, like, didn't know necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and that I was able to share with her. And just the flexibility. Um, we came in to Marine Primary, and, um, and like some people, just depending, the, the teachers were also just so willing to work with us. So some people did um, um, help, help to read, which is like wor working one on one, and that really works for some of the volunteers, you know, just that one on one all day long. Um, other people were able to just join a teacher in a classroom and we're just in that classroom all day. And then people like myself and two of the other volunteers, we took groups of five out of the classroom to read. And so, and the, I mean, we were really able to just like say what we wanted and the teachers were just, ha were just happy with whatever we were doing, you know? And I think that is really important to like let volunteers feel out what they just feel the most comfortable with because that's what they're going to be the most mm. successful in. Like what you want and what you feel really good about is what is going to, you mm. know, mm. so that's been really good. Yeah. I think that especially with American volunteers um, as opposed to European or other like African or anywhere in the world, volunteers from anywhere else, um, they c we were coming with a certain um, 
set of expectations and it's just we have a, a higher standard of perfection I don't know how to explain it like we've all so the people that are volunteering for these types of things like we all believe in higher education we've all been a part of it um, and you know have jobs that expect like the very best and so we're we're just used to being so competitive in, in the States. And so when we come here and there's like some disorganization some days or just not enough resources here, we're just like, oh, and it's so frustrating to some people, you know? And you just, I just don't think that you can look at it that way, you know? I think you need to come at it like trying to do your best every day, but just like work with what's, mm. what's there and it'll be successful. Mm. Like, I feel like if I could say one thing to a lot of Americans, just like take a deep breath. It's fine if there's a certain amount of craziness, like, it's okay. There are some people that are benefiting from that, you know? It's been such a really positive experience, like, right, all around. I really can't think of... It's been really great. One, I mean, I guess for me, I'm just happy that I'm, like, staying longer because I feel like I've just made... I'm just, I don't know, like, today, for example, I or last week I met one of the parents, like they came to school and I met them and we started talking and then today I was invited back to a house like for dinner, like this little girl, Nuran, she said my mommy's been asking like when are you going to come back and that's the, more of like the kind of thing that I want and I'm just like so lucky that I am going to have the time for that, mm -hmm. so, but I mean better come for two months and nothing, definitely like mm -hmm. I think it's just been so enriching, so you yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that people would be, like, hungry for more. There's so much here to work with that mm -hmm. people will be really, really enthusiastic for being here for a semester or a year. Mm -hmm. Well, just, I mean, every day there's, like, something great, but to, today we had, for example, after school was the Marine Kleinberg soccer game between the grade threes, and I work with grade three and grade, and grade two, so, like, those are the kids that I read with, and they were just, they all had, like, uniforms, and I seriously, like, was just bursting with energy and happiness like seeing them because yeah some of them are so good at mm -hmm. soccer and there you know there are people watching like their parents came like I don't know how often they get to do that kind of thing and it was just so I mean Maureen won three to zero which is cool <laughs> but like all everyone was having a good time you know what I mean yeah. so yeah and that was just a lot of fun it's been a great experience like I love world teach I think that everyone should do it <laughs>